Hey, this is Red Band, coming to you live from the world famous comedy store main room for a brand new episode of Joel Tony. Give it up for Tony and Hey everybody, what the fuck is up? Make some noise, come on. Loud. You're gonna get louder. Do it again. Louder. Louder. That's motherfucking kill Tony. Brian Redband's in the house. What is up, guys? Gentlemen. Ryan J. Ebelt drawing tonight's episode. I'll print at ryanjebelt.com. You guys are at the number one live podcast in the world. Make some noise again. Yes. Power. <laughs> I'm excited about life, Brian. A lot of fun stuff yes. happening in the world. Uh, I'm fucking pumped about everything. I had a great fucking uh, meal recently. Me too. Yeah, Kill Tony is supported in part by HelloFresh, the meal mm. delivery kit service dedicated to making cooking fun, easy, and convenient. I actually got it today. It, was, it arrived on my front porch. It's like this box and it has like ice packs in it, and there's just bags. Each bag is a meal, and every single bag has all the ingredients. So everything you need, just like a little salt, a little oil, it's all in there. And it only took me 20 minutes, and I had an awesome meal. It was great, I made tacos today. You it, sent me a picture with I, you wearing the apron? Yeah, it came with an apron, I had a little Fuck apron. It. I was cooking with my booty shorts on. Just adorable. Each week, HelloFresh creates new delicious recipes with step-by-step -step instructions dedicated to take around 30 minutes for everyone from novices to seasoned home cooks, short on time, all for less than $10 a meal. They source the freshest ingredients measured to the exact quantities needed so there's no food waste. But they also employ two full-time registered dietitians on staff who review each recipe to ensure it's nutritionally balanced. All delivered to your doorstep in a special insulated box for free. For $30 off your first week of deliveries, visit HelloFresh.com and enter the promo code KILLTONY30 at checkout. <laughs> are you hiring? Huh? huh? How many people out there are hiring right now? Make some noise if you're hiring. You, are you hiring? Do you know where the best place to post your job? is to find the best candidates? I do. With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to 100 plus job sites with just one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. <laughs> Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them. In fact, 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through in the site in one day. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, your, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. One more time to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. Do you guys love Kill Tony? Do you? If you do, then you love the Kill Tony band. Fun fact, they just got a new show on Comedy Central Snapchat. Yeah. Yeah. Void is one of the most hilarious and compelling new things you could possibly watch. Five episodes total, all coming out this week. There's two available right now. That's on Snapchat. Check out Comedy Central's channel. The show is created and starring Pat Reagan, Joel Jimenez, and Roast Battle's Brian Moses, and our good friend John Tomaszewski. It's really funny. The Kill Tony Band got their own fucking Comedy Central Snapchat show. How about that? Yeah. That's just a commercial out of the goodness of our heart. Mm -hmm. We got to say thanks to Boston, by the way. We were in Boston oh. Friday night. And we only had like four, four weeks notice. Yep. Sold it out. It was packed. Fire capacity yeah. in Boston. What an unbelievable show. Hopefully the audio, I saw your, it's a battle. Oh, it's a battle. But yeah. hopefully we're going to get that out there soon for you listeners that are out there and the ones listening to the live stream on the show right now. I'm in Cap City in Austin, Texas, the first weekend of October. In fact, I get there on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, a bunch of shows. Rooster Teeth Feathers in San Francisco, 12th to the 14th, La Jolla, November 10th and 11th. And I'm about to make an announcement. You want to do a breaking news? I'm about to make a big tour announcement. You guys like big tour announcements? Huh? How many Americans do we have in this audience tonight? Well, we have breaking news. I, Tony Hinchcliffe, one of the top young rising comedians in the world, 
am doing my second full-blown Australian tour. November 22nd through the 28th. 22nd in Melbourne. Two shows in Sydney, the 23rd and the 24th. And then Brisbane, the 26th. Day off on the 27th to fly to Adelaide. And then I'm in Adelaide on the 28th. It's my second November tour. I'm going to be spending Thanksgiving in Australia. I'm letting my brother know. He's in the audience. Make some noise for Donnie Hinchcliffe. Let me crash on his couch when I was becoming one of the top young rising comedians in the world. I'm excited about tonight's show. We have two of the funniest guests as we have every single week on this amazing fucking show. Are you guys really ready to start the show? It's a fucking half-ass energy crowd tonight, but maybe you guys will get a little more excited when I tell you that tonight's guests are Sal Volcano and Dom Irera. Two of the greatest fucking comedians in the world. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you know what? Let Dom take the inside. You take the outside, Sal. I like Dom next to me. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's Dom Irera and Sal Volcano. There you go. That sounded good. Now they're getting it a little bit. You guys have both done the show a bunch of times. I'm super excited to have you guys back. As always, we always fucking have fun with you guys. I, I saw both of them last night at the Impractical Jokers Live. If, you, if you're a fan of uh, the show, you have to go see it. I laughed my ass off. One of the greatest nights I've had in a while, man. That was Thank fun. Thank you so much. And That's a great so nice ending also. What a great ending. Sal and his friends, the Impractical Jokers, one of our favorite shows, sold out the Greek theater in Los Crazy. Angeles last night. That's where you clap. Welcome to being in public, Kill Tony fans. That's where you would clap like fucking adults with respect. Jesus fucking Christ. And uh, last time you guys were guests on the show yeah. together was in Austin, Texas, when Jeremiah Watkins' band member got attacked by a comedian on mushrooms. So who knows what can happen tonight. Let's just jump right into the festivities, and I will bring up our favorite band with their new Comedy Central Snapchat show called Void. It's my favorite band in the world. The best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Jimenez, and Chris, the bass player. <laughs> oh, shit. What is happening? Oh! Wow, the people love it. Wow. All the women and people that aren't white love that shit. Yeah. Well, how did they get all those jerseys? <laughs> all the white guys just staring. But the women go crazy when football players kneel. What's up, kneeling football players? What's up, we're woke football players. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't know that the San Diego Chargers had four backup kickers. Well, I'm only good at soccer, so you know. Oh, well, I'm excited about this. The band commits to characters throughout a show. Oh, wow, look at that. He's got hands and a nose. <laughs> I got dropped from the Seahawks. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins, Pat yeah, Reagan, Jeremiah. Joel Jimenez. I'm excited about your guys' show Void on Comedy Central Snapchat. But time for Kill Tony. Yeah. Everything's in place. Bunch of people signed up before the show. Some of them promising comedians. Some of them insane people that just sign up lists when they see a spot to sign up. If your name gets pulled out, you get 60 seconds. You know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. Oh, you can barely hear that, Brian. It's so... Oh, boy. That means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Are you guys ready to start Kill Tony? <laughs> All right, I'm going to pull the name out of the bucket. Then they get an uninterrupted 60 seconds and then they become a guest on the number one live podcast in the world. Shall we? Yes, Let's please. do it. I pulled the name out of the bucket. The first name going up tonight is Joe Welke. <laughs> Here he comes. From deep in the darkness, Joe Welke. One more time for Joe Welke, everybody. Here we go. Ooh, thanks, Eric. I'm getting sick of guys complaining about getting hand jobs. 
I had this guy friend of mine come up to me the other day, and he was like, yeah, I hooked up with this chick last night. And I was like, awesome, man. He was like, no, it wasn't awesome. All I got was a hand job. What is this, fourth grade? I was like, yo, who is getting hand jobs in fourth grade? Dude, I think you might have got molested. You, know? you want me to call somebody for you? You know, it's just all these greedy guys are ruining hand jobs. You know, you can't get them anymore. They're out of print. Like you, you are way more likely to get unprotected sex than a hand job. Like, way more likely. I don't know. Just these greedy dudes. You know, they just ruined it. You know, like everybody, like I feel like everybody in this room can make eggs just as good as Denny's. But sometimes you don't feel like making it, you know? Like all these guys, they, <laughs> all right, all right, thank you. <laughs> Joe Welke. So who was getting the hand job there? A friend got a hand job yeah, in fourth grade? Yeah, a friend grade? of mine, yeah. You, know, you didn't get a hand job in fourth grade? No, no, Your no. first hand job was when? Ooh, uh, ballpark it. Freshman year of high school, thirteen. Perfect timing. <laughs> Freshman year of high school was yes, your sir. first handy. You remember your first blowjob? Yes, I do. That was at, that, at the rate you're going with hand jobs. It's probably your yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, I think, junior year in wow. an elevator of a laser tag arena. Wow, an okay. elevator. How many floors oh. did you go up on that elevator? That's a quick finish, buddy. Oh, it's only a three-floor trip. Hey, you had all that one fog. Floor, one floor. I took the elevator in a uh, Holiday Inn Express. Uh, <laughs> well, I came before I got in, so... Uh, <laughs> fuck yeah. It was the first one, so yeah, so it was your quick. first blowjob was in an elevator? Yeah. Man, going down... Hello. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, good. Welcome, everybody. Okay. Go for the laser tag. Stay for the outright cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really cool because it was not only funny, but it was informative. Th yeah, you know? thank you. I feel, like, I, I feel like I learned from that, and I felt some sadness about your life. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, it's good for comedy, you know? Yeah, yeah. What's the last hand job you got? Dude, that's, I, I can't even remember. Just a just a hand job. I have no idea. Uh, so Dom was right. All right. So yeah. You don't go to massage parlors while. ever? What's up? You never go to massage parlors ever? No. That's the only time a hand job is like, acceptable, I think. <laughs> you but think? They, they do like, Brian, the back to yeah, Red, welcome to Brian Redband's yeah, thoughts, everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you mean it's the only time it's acceptable? Well, I mean, like, if, if you, you were don't were with a girl and you weren't at that location, you'd be like, unacceptable! <laughs> well, I think that's like his whole joke. Like, yeah, I don't want a hand job, but like, who needs that? No, I, I do. I, I was getting nostalgic about them. Like, you just can't get them anymore. Yeah, wow. massage parlors, rubmaps.com. You can right. get them more oh now. Oh, my no. God. Tony. <laughs> so, so bad. You can, get, you can get them more now. You just I, have to know where to go. Well, now that this like is tapes. out there. Yo. <laughs> Tony. I know. I feel like if you ask a woman for just a hand job, like it's like kind of insulting. <laughs> you you, you nah. ask for what you want. I don't. I don't know. What you, Communication Joel, is key. Joel, so. Joel, Joel Jimenez. I mean, I'm passionate about this topic. Honestly, <laughs> I I think it's the hand job is highly underrated. I back this guy. I'm all about that. I think it's we need true. to. True. Mexicans be like all jobs. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Joe, what do you do for a living? I uh, do social media and like write articles for a couple different websites. What kind of what kind of websites do you write articles for? Uh, there's this one called Screen Rant that's about like comic book movies and shit like that. Oh, and very cool. That's pop yeah. that's a popular website. Yeah, You're yeah. just selling it. Yeah. Have you seen the movie The Blind Side? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. Very good. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand up, Joe? Uh uh, embarrassingly, like nine years. Nine years? Oh, oh. fuck. Now I'm going to go to my specialist, Dom Irera, on this one. Uh, I'll I, jump in on this. I would move on. <laughs> <laughs> nine years? That's yeah, I started when I was 18. Do, 30, the minute you did a hand job bid for if the nine fucking years. You got to hand it to him, Joe. Oh, that is so. Anyway, <laughs> keep up the good work. <laughs> Can I ask? I, I didn't track uh, with the ending with the Denny's and the eggs. I didn't, yeah, I didn't track I, for me. Yeah, I fucked that up. I, 
I was I've I've missed uh, the setup on that one. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it was me or if it was you. No, it was I, know it was I okay. fucked that up. Oh. That's cool. Uh, <clears throat> Where have you been doing comedy for nine years at? What well, cave in the <laughs> desert have you been doing comedy at for nine years? Well, I started the in the Joshua like, Tree Chuckle Hut. <laughs> <laughs> well, I started in like D.C., Baltimore, and then I was living in New York the last five years. I just moved wow. here like six months ago. Wow, D.C., Baltimore. Yes, sir. Where Nine years. Huh? How much time do you have? Like, if you had to do a set, what's the most? I mean, I've featured before, like 30, 40 minutes. Oh, 30? cool. So, like, two quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 40 minutes is substantial. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was that something new that you were trying, or? Uh, no, that's a, that's a little old. Oh. So it's old, and you still messed up, messed it up. Well, in that part is one new. minute like set. <laughs> part of it. How long have new. you been in Los Angeles for? Like six months. Six Since months. the end of March. What's your living situation? I live with a weed delivery guy in. In Don't Hancock. shout out to LA Speed Weed. Shout out to LA Speed Weed. Shout out to LA Speed Weed. Get your weed delivered right to your door. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. get it all just delivered to your door. You can get your weed, your Hello Fresh, get the munchies afterwards. Yeah. Delicious. Fuck Cook yeah. a meal yourself. Can I, I have a question? Yeah. Was was this setup just like something that you made up? Because I'm like, I was really trying to be perceptive as to if that happened, but it seemed very convenient. And he was like, "What fourth grade?" I no, no, that it. was that was real. A okay. guy said that. He was like, "Who's fourth okay, grade?" So everything was kind of really did play out that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't like. I wasn't quick witted enough. I got that staircase wit, where I just figure. Oh, well, then the you joke. should do comedy on staircases more. <laughs> often. I got a hand job on a staircase in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I swear to God, true fact. Really? Yeah, yeah, and I, I thought I wasn't going to finish, but then I did, and then I had to go to science class. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, I'll probably regret saying this, and you're all welcome. Wow. I, got, uh, st I had sticky shorts for the rest of the day, and that's all I'll say. Yeah. That's what we call a safety in the business. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, what scares you? What scares me? Oh, uh... Dying irrelevant, never oh, having an impact. Shit, you are facing your fears head on tonight. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> All right, Joe. Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah. All right, there he goes. Joe Welke, everybody. You, you had fun. You heard him. Some of these people like the punishment. It's like a S and M show so far. We got into a conversation after seeing the show with uh, Brian and his girlfriend about the first time we came. Uh -huh. And I honestly, I, I came like at least a gallon of cum. Ser <laughs> seriously, I'm not, that I, I really came so much. I, I, I can never get this image out of my head now. I, uh, <laughs> think about it the next time you're about to eat. But I came so much yeah. that I, I, look, I thought I'll never have a kid because I, I, don't, I don't have any cum left. Anyway, let's go with the show. <laughs> Just a musical break there. One, one time I came so much, there's a rain delay. Wow. Now, are you doing a character tonight? <laughs> I, I don't know. I are you I doing a character so hard tonight? I came, so, I came so hard one time, I said, uh, I said, uh, oh, no, I've gone too far. I take it back. Right. Wow. Joel Jimenez in the house. No signs of Joelberg yet this dude, evening. Uh, dude, I'm dude, still waiting on Joelberg. To dude, Tony. Yeah. I came so hard I went. What? Have you ever came so thick it made a bubble? Okay, there we go. That's where the momentum goes to die. One, one, um, one time I, I came so hard we we lost all our podcast sponsors. <laughs> all right. <laughs> How hard did you come? You guys are just a bunch of fucking rugrats. You know that? You fucking guys just love playing with the devil, don't you? There's one thing we can't really make a joke about. Let's do it. Bunch of bad kids in a classroom. You gonna play something? <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Maddie Hansen, everyone. Come on. Maddie Hansen. It takes a while in the big main room. We used to be in the belly room. It used to take only seconds, but we've gotten bigger. Come on, everybody. Maddie Hansen. Um, 
I've dated more gay guys than straight guys. I used to think it was like a phase, but I'm like seven or eight gays deep. And the best part is I'm like turning them gay. I'm a flipper. <laughs> like it's like me and then it's just like full homo. But you know, like I see this community service, like I feel like the more guys I can turn, you know, the cleaner our streets are gonna be, um, the better architecture is gonna be, gym memberships are gonna skyrocket, Prius sales will skyrocket. And then, you know, like all the holes in the ozone will be closed. Like all the holes in general will be closed because of me. <laughs> and then I win like the Nobel Pulitzer, um, the one where you don't have to read that much. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I recently made friends with a lesbian and um, it's really cool. Like, I, but I started to feel like she had feelings for me, you know? What? Maddie Hansen, everybody. <laughs> Wow, Maddie, you just set everything off. One time, uh, I, one time I came so hard while I was doing a live podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Did it bubble? <laughs> you sell You're volcano. Fucking, so fucking good. Oh, my sorry. Maddie Hansen, let me guess. She's been doing comedy nine years. One year. One year. All right. You were just on recently, right? I was. A couple yeah, weeks ago. Couple I told you that you're one of the funniest Fox News anchors I've ever you seen did. in my life, you said right? That. You Very said good. That. All right. Maddie, what do you do for a living? Property management. Property management. We did. Now, do you often tell jokes when like you're showing uh when you're showing people houses or apartments? <laughs> do you have any like jokes that you regularly do? You know, like or are you just very serious, like how you I'm are very, right I'm now? very serious. Really? Yeah. Okay, so like if you were going to sell me, Dom, and Sal, and Brian a house. Okay. Well, I don't sell houses. A, I lease apartments. Oh, just apartments. Yeah. Oh, you let the wolf out. Everybody knows that if you only work with apartments, hey. the real estate wolf comes out. Hey, Jeremiah. One of our, very ra one of our most <laughs> rare sound effects that we use. The old apartment wolf. The hey. wolf of the comedy store. There, okay. There hey. you go. The wolf of the comedy store. All right. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, here's how I'd sell you a house. Uh, hey, this is a house. Uh, 135 people died in it. <laughs> wow. I, we, can you tell which one of the football players is the most concussed? <laughs> so, Maddie, if you, if you, are you good at, do you think you're good at getting apartments leased? No. No, you're not good at it. Mm -mm. How, what makes you say that? I mean, I just have high availability right now. You do. Like my percentage is high. Okay, if you were going to sell the four of us a four-bedroom apartment, how would you do it? What would you say? I think that's a house. <laughs> four-bedroom apartment? <laughs> yeah, what is the number of rooms beco before it becomes a house? Probably a house three. is a standalone thing, you fucking bop. No, but that's a condo. <laughs> there could be a four-bedroom apartment. What? There could be a four-bedroom apartment. There's not... Is that a thing? I've never seen a four-bedroom apartment. Yeah, hey, that's a condo. Let's, let's yeah, but it could be a thing. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's to get into like an argument here. It's supposed to be like a comedy show. That's <laughs> bullshit. I'll tell you what a fucking house is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never. I mean, anyone can have a house. So. With, make, uh, it takes a special uh, person to have a home, right? Is that the? Yes. <laughs> anyone could be a father. <laughs> it takes a special person to be a dad. Right. True. Maddie, yeah. what yeah. made you want to start doing stand-up comedy a year ago? What changed in your life? Did something happen, or what made you start? I mean, I don't know. I always wanted to try it. I just didn't think. Are you I getting sleepy? I didn't think there was. What? Are you Did getting you... sleepy? No. Oh, you just look like you were fading. Oh, sorry. I'm just like, <laughs> like I mean, I so like you just no, something I you wanted to try. try Did a lot of people around you tell you that you're? <laughs> <laughs> she was uh. <laughs> red rum, red rum. <laughs> Did a lot. <laughs> Okay. Did a lot of people around you, like in your life, tell you that you're funny or something? No. Like, no? no, they didn't. No, I, mean, I, I just wanted I to confirm did. that. I just... <laughs> Are you happy doing stand up? Does it make yeah. you happy? I like it, yeah. It does yeah. make me happy. Do you hear that noise that yeah. happens? <laughs> you, I think you make that happen with your eyes. It's like I'm in the Maddie, what's or the something? smartest thing you've ever done? The smartest? <laughs> Oh, Brian, you're out of control over here. This fucking soundboard is smoking for you podcast <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Brian's fingers are just on fire tonight. <laughs> the 
the engineer going I, red. I get nervous and I push things. The smartest thing I've ever done? Yes. Um, well, we talked about this last time. I no, I don't I, remember. Okay, you don't remember yet. Yeah. Uh, well, I have a degree in, in American history, and that's like my oh. favorite. <laughs> that's like my passion is American like history. colonial history. <laughs> huh. What's like something that you could teach us that's cool? Nothing. Ooh. Yeah, nothing. nothing's cool about it. Um, I don't know. All I'm of on the my history head. in America that you just said yeah. that you've studied and that you love. That's of all the things that have happened in American history. You just said, I asked you what you're into, and you said American history, right? Yeah. Okay. But I'm trying to, like, just one, like, fact. Sure. Um, Do you remember anything that you've ever learned? Well, I was, li I don't know. I'm, I'm listening to my second, like, Historically, George uh, Washington. Historically, <laughs> <laughs> Our homes. I, um... I would like to see, if you're passionate about American history, I would love yeah. to see you weave that into what you're doing, uh, besides turning, like turning into gays. Yeah. I like uh, yeah. I First of all, just... Enough of these hand job jokes. Let's yeah. hear a good old John Hancock <laughs> joke, yeah. you know what I mean? John. First of all, fashion sense, off the charts. Oh, okay, thanks. I, yeah. would, di I would disagree because uh, she looks like a 49er up top and a Raider down below. <laughs> I thought you had a really fun delivery. Like, like Thanks. really, when you began to speak, I was getting amused and like almost laughing at just your like laid back kind of like it was like a tippy toe type of delivery. And I thought that was like a, a strength of yeah. Okay. Your style was very uh, interesting. Tippy toe oh, delivery because it was uh, because you could sleep right through it. Is that why you call it? All right, I'm just being mean at this point. So, yes. tippy toe delivery is one of the tiggiest things you've ever said. <laughs> Hey, you want to try and turn me? <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy. All right, Maddie. Whoa. Ooh, too wow. easy. Wait, Maddie just woke up. I'm not sure she's about to let her go, and she said sure something. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown. It's not going to be that easy to turn me. I swear to God, I love to. I'm sure you've been turned yeah. around a few times. He can fit a lot of dudes in his end zone. Yeah. <laughs> Maddie, are you single? I am. Wow. Oh, wow. How long have you been single for? Since the last gay, <laughs> seven years. Seven years? Yeah. Holy seven. Wow. Like no boyfriend? No. Seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's peculiar. I mean, I've honest. turned some, like, I've dated some gays in between. What is this thing? But, like, why I've never why, been why in do you think that there's so many gays that hook up with you? Why do you think that is? Because she's got a big dick. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably lease that shit. You could probably yeah, lease that yes. shit. Dom Irera. Yes, you did get an applause break, Dom. I don't know. Do you just it's not go like on four dates? of them. Four gay guys. You, well, yeah, some of them are, like, one of them is, like, full-blown. Full, full Eight? Group. Yeah, you don't want to say full-blown when you're full talking about the gay men. I, I know. I just hope. They take I know. Um, one of them is, like, completely gay, and then I have, like, three that are, like, bi, which is pretty much... Gay. <laughs> Wait a second, Dom Rivera. Yes. He's completely gay. What's that mean? He only puts the dip in. Well, like I was the last woman that he dated, and then, and now he's just only dates men. So maybe you're hanging men. out the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, I about, mean, you can yeah. walk outside, throw a rock, and hit a straight man. And in nine years, you haven't dated a straight here? man. Here? <laughs> here? Yeah, of course. Well, here. No, I have. No, I have. I'm just saying there's some like gays mixed in there. She's she's like a mon grinder. I would say the percentage of gays is higher than the percentage of full straights. <laughs> what do you? How do you women? Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, sexuality is like a. How do you know that they're? How do you spectrum? know that? Uh, do you follow up with all these guys? <laughs> are you one of those well, girls who just some thinks them, that if they don't want to, well, they don't want to be with you, they must be gay? No, I've caught some of them like homoing. You have homo caught some of them homoing. That's a new <laughs> verb I didn't know existed. Homoing? Oh, oh yeah, that's a new yeah. entry to Webster. Yeah. Homo you mean playing football? <laughs> like, well, what did you Can you, you use see? that in a sentence? What? Can you use that in a sentence? Yeah. I just did. <laughs> I shy. caught you homoing. <laughs> she did. With caught some ring. of them homoing. Yeah. Now, homoing is when you upgrade from three bedrooms to four bedrooms, right? right? Yes. Right. It is. Yes. With one bath. Yes. Hello. Still got yeah. it. Still I mean, we are on a realty homosexual tear up here. <laughs> so, like, when homosexual you tear is right. When you, <laughs> when you caught them homoing, what have you seen? What does that mean? 
You've well, one of them I, I had like suspicions because uh-huh. he spent like a lot of time in WeHo and he used to be a dancer at Mickey's, um, which some straight men are. But so I kind of like, I created, okay, I like created a fake phone number and then texted him a f- picture of a hot guy from Grindr and it's like, hey, remember me? And then he was like, no, like I don't swing that way. And I was like, damn it. And then that night, like a few hours later, he called that number. You wanted him to be gay, though. Yeah, right. this is crazy. We just found out <laughs> you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's. <laughs> He, you're he, crazy. He as foiled fuck. your projection of gayness right. onto him. Fuck, he's not gay. Right. right. Even <laughs> if you were going to try to catch him being gay, you yeah. decided to pick a random picture of a random guy, well, and you thought he was going to be like, "Oh yeah, I fucking remember you." Your name's Maddie. Maddie Hansen. Maddie yeah. Hansen into catch a gay. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I wanted to find like it had to be specific. I wanted to make sure it was someone he would go for. But so wow. you're, you're, subcon- no, you're, you're subconsciously you're subconsciously uh, dating these gay guys and right. then uh, like trying like trying to uncover it. It's like this mental right. thing that yeah, you're doing psychologically. Yeah, I think that means like that. you gay. But I've also found. <laughs> but I also had to like he would have me pick him up late at night and he'd be with his like his like male escort friends. Oh God, you you need to move. <laughs> Dom, you know, I don't know what's going on. Dom, you know how it is when you hang with male escort friends. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, oh, your old male escort <laughs> fans watch the old football game and just hang out. I do feel like you live a world that nobody in this old room lives. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, I used to work in high-end retail, so that's probably... Oh, well, that bad They were a high-end. lot of them. <laughs> What's high-end retail? Like a... You wouldn't know. <laughs> no, oh, it's, 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 it's... I'm sorry. Fuck. I don't know. Chanel? No, like, I, 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 yeah, I'll yeah, take a yeah, shot in the yeah. dark. I think I got it right. Mid like warehouse, store, but yeah, those a department store. Golden, yeah, you're right. He wouldn't triangle. know what high end retail was. He sold out the Hold Greek on. theater last night, but uh, <laughs> he wouldn't know a high end retail. You're right. He's just total. I also complimented he's just, around. He's, he's just over here, just homoing around. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on. All right, no, Maddie Hansen, you're one of the craziest ladies I think we've ever had on this show. You weren't really like outgoingly crazy, but there's a lot of demons, a lot of demons in that one. Texted her boyfriend a picture of another dude. Do you remember me? Alright, this show's out of fucking control. <laughs> the Kill Tony band. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for CJ Kelly. 60 seconds uninterrupted. Here he comes. The steady jog. How are we doing, everybody? My name is CJ Kelly. I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. I grew up in South Florida. And uh, I hate to admit it, guys, but I'm white trash through and through, you know? Like, straight up, if Kid Rock and Limp Biscuit went on tour together, I'd be front and center, getting hammered drunk. Uh, <laughs> especially growing up in Florida. My, uh, my dad never really laid his hands on me. He did it one time. Uh, I kind of deserved it. These kids ripped me off for like $400 worth of weed, and my dad had a gun in his safe with a fingerprint, right? Fingerprint scanner. I put a piece of tape over the fingerprint scanner, and then in the morning at 6 a.m. I got woken up uh, by my dad grabbing me by one ankle, my bed's about this high, rips me off the bed and goes, who the fuck do you think you are, James Bond? He's like, what were you after, the money, the gun? The drugs? I was like, what'd you say about drugs? Boom, healed to the face. Thank you, guys. C.J. Kelly. Yeah? Mm. You guys' uh, thoughts, initial thoughts on C.J.? C.J., um, okay. Just throwing this out there. That's fine. God bless. Uh, I'd work more on some punchlines. <laughs> Thank you. But you are the king of the setup so far, is what we learned here tonight. A lot of good I, setups. I, uh, I think it's cute your dad kept his gun in a safe, not a sock like the rest of us. <laughs> I just think, uh, I think that your, your heart's in the right place, probably. Uh, but, you know, they're hanging on your words, waiting for something to, to punch. So you want to, especially you want to be efficient within a minute. And uh, maybe get to uh, in stand-up a comedy. Joke. Uh, 
not, not to interrupt you, so we actually go for uh, what we call the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and, am, I, am I going in the right direction? Yeah, I mean, I mean, historically. Yes. And 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 and, and Maddie uh, Hansen can attest to this. Historically, uh, stand-up comedy is about the laugh. Thank you. CJ, has anyone ever told you before that you look like an old baby? <laughs> no. <laughs> you look like an old baby. Thank you. Just thought of that right now, just That's for you. Hilarious. Special roast joke, you made it come out of me. <laughs> written just for you, CJ. <laughs> wow, written. He, he Thank you. He was relaxed. I mean, he was very relaxed. It's, it's, I'm nervous as shit right now, guys. Oh, I had to have a couple of beers before I got over here. Thank you. You look chill as fuck. Oh. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, January 2014 is when I started. Oh, I'm Boston. happy for you. Oh, yeah. You let us do the math yeah, for yeah, you, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. I see what you did yeah. there. <laughs> so you started here? It's like three no, Super Bowls ago. I started in Boston, ago. Massachusetts. Boston, Massachusetts. Where we had fun the other night. Yeah, it was a good. How was it? Yeah, I, yep, just said it. Yep. Um, <laughs> said it was good. <laughs> said it was fun. Wait till you good. listen. The story it's... sounded intense. It sounded like it was like something definitely notable to speak about. I would just work on like paring it down and getting to the crux of like what exactly you want to say. And you could probably like, even though it's complicated, you should try to simplify exactly what happens and just get to the heart of it quicker. And, and also, if you're going to come out with a quick opener that you think is going to start the momentum for your set, I think you might want to go a little bit more topical than Fred Durst and Kid Rock. <laughs> I mean, it's like those references are literally like yeah. 20 years old. Well, you know, if I were you, I'd come out and I'd go, hello, I look like an old baby. <laughs> and then I'd get that big fucking laugh. Look at that applause break. You see what that looks like, CJ? I want you to look. Look out there, CJ. Look out there. Look at what it looks like. Isn't it powerful? And then you get that, and then you just fucking keep tagging it. <laughs> oh, shit. This oh, is not God. a good thing that's yeah. happening at all. Thank you, band, for always pushing the levels of creativity during a live show that gets heard by yeah. hundreds the, of thousands of people. There's a ball flying around the room. Like the tape, like the, t the whole tape thing on the lock, that's very geeky and very like cool that you know that. But is that necessary for the joke at all? Uh, well, the punchline is... Who do you think you are, James Bond? Because that actually, you know, that happened to me. But CJ, what do you do for a living? Uh, I work at restaurants. What restaurant? I'm. Last time I was on the show, I said that, and I got fired. So no. What? Is that true? No. I, no. I. I quit. I. I was gonna oh, get cool. fired anyway, but I knew it was coming. So I. You see, that's it. funny. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, what yeah, restaurant like was it? Uh, Lucille's Barbecue in West Covina. I lived there all last year. Yeah, I knew I had to. Yeah, I had to. You preemptively. Well, I, I called out a lot, you know, because like stand up. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. Work lunch shifts. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard because it's like you know, there's politics at barbecue restaurants. Really? <laughs> what kind of politics? Uh, kind of see, politics? this is very funny. Like, the, <laughs> there are not. Maybe there are. I want to hear about the them. longer Bar barbecue you... places and their politics. You got right wing, left yeah. wing, chicken wing, breast. <laughs> now you see something? Come on, can you guys give it up for that, please? That's, yeah, that is so fun. good. These are that a bunch is so of good. Spoiled babies out here. They just take it for granted. I listen every week. I don't need to laugh. Fucking. That's please. like a comedy ninja right there. That was very, very good. Thank That's one of my favorite things right thank there. Thank you, CJ Kelly. So tell us something interesting about you. Like what's something you know? Ooh, all right. Special um, skills, hobbies, talents, anything. I, there's a lot of interesting stories, Tony. I, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> I love it when the comedian. I'm, but I'm holding my someone. tongue because oh. I see why you're trying I comedy. Probably, I think everyone guys. tells you you're hysterical uh, when you're just yourself. Yeah. You're just gonna you. learn how to harness that yeah. into a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, shit. Yeah. Anything. Anything that you're into. Anything that you like. Uh, one time I faked. One time I. F hey, the, hey, back room over Congrats. there. Congrats! You're at the level to where you're getting heckled by the yeah. rest of the people. Yeah, he did no heroin before. Oh, we know him. He's a piece of shit. I love CJ, you guys. answer the question that I asked you two uh, minutes ago. One time ago. I faked an asthma attack in Boston. I say anything interesting, anything so, you like, any hobbies, anything oh, about you, and you say that I one time you faked an asthma attack in to get Boston. It, can I finish? Uh, yeah, we don't want deleted scenes from the yeah, Sandlot. So I, I was, uh, <laughs> or it. I, I faked an asthma attack at a 7-Eleven because it was very cold outside. It was February in Boston. 
and I was on the North Shore, and I needed to ride back to the city. Me and this one gentleman, uh, we were staying in an abandoned house together. Get to the point. Get to the point. Man, you're going Good Lord. This, a, this yeah. asthma story is breathtaking. Uh, <laughs> Did you fake the asthma attack to get a ride in an ambulance? I did, yeah. You have to get to that right away. That's very funny. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. just say, just say, one time I faked an asthma attack to get a, to hitch a ride on an ambulance. ambulance. Yeah. And then go from there. The, the worst part, too, was the paramedics, as soon as I got in the ambulance, they're like, so, Charles, what's going on? Because you're not having an asthma attack. And I had the bright idea to tell them that uh, I smoke crack. <laughs> and... and <laughs> And that's why I was panicking. So you, then you I know was, you have to pay eight hundred dollars anytime you take an ambulance ride. I don't really never, believe this story. I at did all. that I, once. I did that. I, I faked. I used to fake passing out, and then <laughs> I would just lay there, and like uh, I got carried into the ambulance, and then I got an IV put in me, and I had to continue <laughs> to pretend to be passed out. <laughs> One yeah. time I was in Bonnaroo right after high school. Uh, it was the one time I went to Bonnaroo in Tennessee, me and my buddies. I didn't have much money or anything. And we stayed, you know, we pitched a tent. We put all of our sleeping bags and pillows down. We went and we, it was the first time I ate mushrooms. And, uh, and we tripped our balls off. Dave Matthews and fucking Steve Winwood and uh, the Grateful Dead. Fucking and Fred it Jones. started pouring down rain yeah. during this show. And we go back to our tent, everything's flooded, so I faked an overdose to stay in the <laughs> medical tent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a true story. Uh, uh, sometimes I eat breakfast. <laughs> so, sometimes I'll have like a full breakfast, and other times <laughs> you know, I'll just have like juice and maybe a muffin or something. A lot of times, you know, I don't, do you like that cinnamon bread anyway? I get to the, to the point. <laughs> <laughs> so, I live in a house, four stories, uh, it's connected to, uh, you know, I jerked off on my uncle one time, uh, you know, I, I like the kugel with the white raisins, anyway. C.J. Kelly, ladies and Thank gentlemen, you there he goes, he's on Instagram at the real C.S. Kelly, Maddie's not on social media, Joe Welke's at Joe Welke. All right, okay, okay, there's a part where... Oh, God. All right, we're gonna really have to tap in and trust our comedic instinct with how much people are gonna wanna hear that every fucking time. Sometimes you gotta hail Mary it. <laughs> how can, how can the comedy store make any money with all these decorations? <laughs> it's crazy. That's Ichabod's bucket of destiny. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket, and it looks, the last name is a little bit bad handwriting. I'm going to try my best on this. Paulina, if your name's Paulina, just come to the stage. Ka Paulina Combau? Paulina Gumbau? You're going to be shy like you don't have bad handwriting, Paulina? I had a feeling. Pol With handwriting that bad, they must, have, they must be sitting in the back of another room waiting for their name to get called. Was, it, pa Paulina? Was it Palavi? No, no, it's Paulina GC. Anybody? Nope. Good. Okay, I actually am very excited about this. I tend to have a pretty good instinct on when a new good name has been pulled. I betcha I'm right on this. This is definitely a new name. Put your hands together for Jer D. J E R D. Oh, what's going on, guys? Uh, so I moved here from uh, Montana about, oh, probably close to six months ago. Uh, a lot of my friends up in Montana think I moved down here to uh, pursue my stand-up comedy dreams. Not the case. Not the case. Montana's got a three-strike rule. All right, I voted for Obama twice, and I didn't vote for Trump. They were like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, my daughter, she just had career day at her school. And she didn't, she didn't tell me anything about Career Day. I didn't find out about it until after it happened. But when I found out about Career Day, I was like, well, why didn't you tell me about Career Day? She's like, well, Dad, I don't even really know what you do. I, well, I told you, I'm a stand-up comic. I get up on stage, tell people jokes, make them laugh. She just kind of looked up at me and goes, wouldn't it just be easier to say you're unemployed? Uh, my daughter, uh, a few days before Christmas, last Christmas, 
she asked for an electric guitar. It was like three or four days before Christmas. I had already done all my shopping, so I couldn't deliver. But uh, she had a, she just had a birthday, so I got her the electric guitar. There's a few reasons why too. Uh, first reason is his musical musical talent runs very deeply in our family. It does. Good night. All right. Okay. Jer D. Hello. Oh, Jer. 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 Jer D. Jer D. All right. Step up to the microphone, Jer. How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, coming up on seven years now. Seven years. All of it in Montana. Uh, no, I've toured. I've toured around like the Midwest there, up there. Okay. Uh, and. So, but you started in Montana. Yes. Do you live here now or you just visit? Yeah, no, I live here now. How long have you lived here? About six months. Six months. What do you yeah. do for a living? Uh, my rich girlfriend. You have a rich girlfriend? Yes. Uh, That's whoa. what you do for a living? Well, Tony, yeah. look at the guy. You can see he's taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you look like you have a sugar mama and a sugar daddy. <laughs> and a sugar, a sugar tooth. I had that sweater in college. Oh, did you? I've been thinking it the whole time. It was very distracting. Yeah, he did too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jer, uh, what does your rich girlfriend do for a living? Uh, she's a... She's a she's <laughs> That's also a ninja right there. She's uh, an environmental engineer. Ooh. Oh, so like an assistant coach? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Man, did she ever tell you like what type of stuff she's working on? That's a pretty smart job. Uh, she does. I don't understand a fucking word of it, but right. you know. Right. So. What are you into? Does she, does she speak a different language? Um, uh, you seem I like a real manly man, sort of. You seem like you'll like cut yeah. down half a tree and then play a video game or something like that. <laughs> You're not far off. You're not far off. We just off. chop down trees in the video game. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he gets Vice City just to go in the forest. <laughs> no, I... I that, was a, that was about that funny. I agree, Sal. I agree. It's so funny. You just you just rob someone and you just fucking go straight to the forest. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I like I like to hunt and fish and you know basically everything's Republican like but with you know without the conservatism you know. Yeah, that's interesting. What do you like to hunt? Uh, I'm cheese. <laughs> Oh, Joelberg's out, it seems. Yeah, it's a green... Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, no, I I'm I'm mostly uh, predator hunt, like uh, bears, bobcats, stuff like that. Wow. Wow. Bear. A liberal hunter. That's amazing. <laughs> That's actually what you should focus on, because you, you clearly, like, you come across as, if I had to take a, just a blind yeah, guess, yeah. a conservative, but you're a liberal. No, no, I, I get That's it. Like, very interesting. Like, I, I am definitely the face of America that voted for Trump. I get it, you know? That's interesting. No, no, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. say your face. I'd say your body. No, um, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your, your belly leans to the alt-right. So <laughs> Burke. <laughs> There he is. Somebody woke the little hunchback in Notre Dame back there, huh? <laughs> we need to build a wall. <laughs> oh, shit. So, Jer, um, you've lived here for six months. What's, uh, what do you like about L.A., different than Montana? What stands out to you? Um, you know, uh, there's always something to do, you know. Uh, I can, you know, if I, if I want, I could have drugs delivered right to my door. I find that amazing. I yeah. find that amazing. Shout out to Speed Lead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, when, and when you say drugs, you're talking about dominoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let the dopamine flow, my friend. <laughs> so, that's interesting, Jer. So you like having stuff delivered to your house. You have a rich girlfriend. How long have you been with the girlfriend? Uh, about four months. Four months? You met yeah. her out here? Yeah. How'd yeah. you meet her? Uh, you know, <laughs> Bumble. Bumble. Wow. I, I wish it was more complicated than that, but it's not, you know? Do you think it's going to go all the way? Why do you wish it was more complicated than that? I couldn't. <laughs> Why do you wish it was more complicated than that? I, it's a great thing yeah, that it's not that complicated. Well, <laughs> you well, wish it was harder for you to find a rich girl? No. 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 
<laughs> I just, I just wish. It Soon was enough, a, you guys will laugh at that. Yeah. I just wish it was like a more interesting story, you know? Like oh, we, I see. We, like we met like paintballing or some shit like that, you know? Paintballing? <laughs> what the I do fuck? It, <laughs> Ew, you don't want to meet a girl You're a paintball. closet yeah. conservative, dude. <laughs> I met my dream girl paintballing, dude. <laughs> hey, come over here, baby. <laughs> are, are you sure you didn't match with her on the dating app called Fumble? Oh, oh God! Jeremiah flexing up. Love it. <laughs> I, I I will say if I'm just trying to be constructive with you, I'm really honestly yeah, listening yeah, to you. Yeah. Uh, well, just first and foremost, you seem to, obviously this is diff- difficult. Everybody's looking at yeah. you. You have one minute, but you seem to get relax a little more. Hold the mic up to your mouth more yep, to okay. command people's presence a little more. Yeah. Also, I I think everybody, myself included, respond. I respond to honesty on stage, and if it's not funny and it's honest, I still find that funny. Yeah. And I I feel like that was just a joke that your daughter didn't actually say. Like, might as well say unemployed, Dad. If she did, that's terrific. But no, I didn't believe that she said that. It felt like just a joke that you wrote. And that's why I think it gets a lukewarm. It's like, ah, instead of like a guttural like, kind of thing. Because I didn't believe that she said that. How old's your daughter? Uh, she uh, just turned 12. Just turned 12. Yeah. And that, is that your only child? Yeah. Does the environmental scientist know, know about this? Yeah. 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 <laughs> did, you, did you eat the afterbirth? What Good the question. Fuck? Good question. Pat Ray. Good question. No. No, no, I'm serious, dude. Good I know, follow. I know people Good do follow. that, but I'm not one of them people. All right. Uh, what is all the right. weirdest thing of... you've ever eaten? The weirdest thing I've ever eaten. Shit. You Sally. know what? It, you know what it was. <laughs> Come on. Uh, oh, I, I actually, and I like, I enjoy them. They're called uh, Rocky Mo- Rocky Mountain oysters. You heard of them? Rocky Mountain oysters. Remind me of what that is. They're, they're uh, fried bull testicles, man. Wow. <laughs> Little brown gravy. <laughs> you a liberal? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's the sound of a bull. <laughs> no testicles. Everybody knows if you take away the bull's testicles. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I prefer pig skin. <laughs> JW, look out. I think Joelberg's got the whole team fired up. Special yeah, it couldn't be more fired up, Tony. Yes. Oh, there we go. Hey, you got a shoe untied there. Yeah. It happens, man. It I'm happens. just trying to help any way I can with this one. I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it out there. Jer D. All right. Well, this was fun to meet you, man. You too. There he goes. Jer D, everybody. He's on Twitter at Jer D Comedy. J E R D Comedy. All one word. You guys having fun out there, huh? The number one live podcast in the world. Oh. Great. <laughs> Man, you would have you guys had the execution of a musical band there on that. It's one, two, three, break. I pulled another name out of the bucket, put your hands together for Max Hoover. Uh. You all know me, still the same OG, but I've been low key. Is he coming? Max Hoover? Is that. Alright. Is that Max? What? You know Max? Is that Punky? Hey, Punky. Punky's the only woman that knows what guys are in the men's restroom. The perks of being one of the only ladies at the comedy store to peace standing up. One of the newest paid regulars, Punky Johnson. Here's Max Hoover, everybody. And the booth that said, motherfucker, the police. Hi, guys. Sorry. Hey. Um, I read this week that whales tend to stay five fathoms under the ocean. I read that and I was like, well, that's neat. Uh, But then I looked up how deep a fathom is. Six fucking feet. A fathom is six feet. Guys, that word's packing more of a punch than two yards. I don't look like I'm a fathom tall. That's what we're doing up here, guys. Breaking new ground, losing respect for units of measurement. Okay, thank you so much. Max Hoover. Very good minute. Most 
solid minute of the night so far. We met you for the first time a few weeks ago, Max we Hoover. And during that interview, I asked you if there's anything interesting about you or anything like that. You didn't give too much of an answer. And then I put together that you are Max Hoover of the Hoover Vacuum family fame. Yes. He did. He is of that Hoover family. Yeah. If you guys like generational vacuum wealth. That's hard to believe because that did not suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. So Max, how's life going? Pretty good. No complaints, Tony. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for asking me. You're welcome. So you've lived here for how long, Max? Uh, a little over a year. Yeah, I moved here in August of last year. Man. Yeah. And a lot of your jokes, like, does it go along sort of like uh, simple, slow, cool like that? Like, you sort of keep that same pace throughout everything? Or do you find um, yourself using that more divisively when you only have a minute? No, I, I, I tend to lean towards that the majority of the time. It's more, uh, I lean on the writing more than the performance. I'm not a good performer by any means. So uh, I, You were performing, actually. Well, that was a, that was double, double technically speaking, No, but it was yeah. a double dose of both. Your d delivery, at least to me, came across as deliberate yeah. and intentional, and I think it added to the whole entire thing. It's, it, it was a lesson for everyone tonight about being completely efficient with your words in under one minute because you didn't do anything that was crazy that we found out about you, but you chose one absurd thing and drilled down on it, and we were all completely hooked on that. I, I, do I take this podcast too serious? I don't know. <laughs> No, I'm just good. trying to. I'm no, also trying I like to, it. I'm I trying to be that. constructive. I really do try to be both. No, yeah. I like. No, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I want to take credit. Max is a, he's a friend of mine. I told him to do the fathom bit, and he did it, and it works. So. Is he that did. true? Your no, that's a. Uh, we can toss that one up to Joel right there. Your friends with Joel Yeah, we do mics a lot. Wow! Yeah. Look at Joel trying to get his family a new vacuum cleaner, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! <You're> right. <laughs> Max, so you, I, I know this is probably annoying to you because you didn't bring it up last time. I yeah. busted you on it. No, uh, it's fine. But, but I want to talk a little bit more about this Hoover thing. I remember having a Hoover growing up. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. If you drive through Akron, you see the big Hoover company. It's a big thing. Yeah. Um, so your dad is also a Hoover, obviously. He is. And what part of the company is he? He's not involved. He's he, not involved. What does he do? He's a stockbroker. Ooh. Yeah, hey, hey, stock guys. Stock in Hoover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh... See, if you establish it being the apartment wolf, then it wouldn't really make sense if it wolf appeared... Of, wolf of Wall Street. Oh, boy. Wow. That's a reach. It sounds a lot like the apartment wolf. All right. So, is it who in your family is in the vacuum business? Um, honestly, no one. We sold it. Wait, no, hold on. Let me say one more thing. Say if your again. Hoover father left the Hoover vacuum company to do something else, one could say that Papa's got a brand new bag. That's a fucking vacuum oh, joke, yeah, right Tony. there, guys. That's yeah, a Tony. That is a clean Ooh. vacuum joke. That is. Tony, they, they could all they could also say his dad doesn't give a Hoover damn. You know? Wow. All right. They could say that if they that wanted. That bad? All right. They could say that if they got hit in the head with a baseball bat and started asking random questions. <laughs> or they could suck it up and laugh. All right. Yeah. Sometimes for breakfast I'll have, like, just lunch meat. <laughs> so, Max, is your grandpa alive? Is he in the business? Uh, Gramps is alive. Uh, Ooh, actually, this is a fun fact about my grandfather. Yeah. Um, Y'all know that Rick Ross song that came out a few years ago where it's like, I think I'm Big Meech, Larry Hoover. Yeah, Larry Hoover. Uh, my grandfather's name is Larry Hoover. Wow. <laughs> like, we started quoting that song to him and he didn't get it. Larry Hoover is a reference to like some drug dealer yes, back in like yes. the early times. Yes. But I wouldn't even call it the early times. But or, earlier than... Yeah, my couple, time. Couple <laughs> yeah, it's ago. relative. But um, no, that's Gramps' name, and so he doesn't get that. But um, but no, he's not involved either. We sold it probably back when he was like a teenager or something. We haven't had anything to do with it uh, uh, hands-on for a few years. We're still involved in some of the boring charity foundation side of things, but that's not the company where I, I regret going into that part. I should have just said we don't have any involvement in it anymore. Right. <laughs> right. You guys do a lot of charity work, though? I don't personally, <laughs> um, but my grandfather does. Yeah, he. Uh... So what's your life like, Max? What's a typical day for Max Hoover? You wake um, up. I wake up. 
I uh, go to work. Uh, I work for a landscape architect. Mm. So we like build pools and shit for people. Wow. Yeah. You, um, you ever hit a woman in an elevator? I haven't, no. Uh. See, see, when I wake up, I have to have something to eat. <laughs> I mean, it has to be something. To... Do you eat breakfast? I do sometimes, yeah. What do you like to eat for breakfast? What's your go-to? Cookie crisp? Um, no, I'm a I'm a fan of like the breakfast bars, like a granola bar, uh, I knew a it. kind I bar, you. a Cliff yeah, bar. I uh, said that earlier. Wow. Nutri-grain, sometimes. Gay bars, yeah. all yeah, of them. Sometimes right? of that. Yeah, sometimes that. How do you like your eggs? Uh, scrambled if my mom no, makes shaved. them. Shaved. <laughs> That's scrambled. That's scrambled. More people Wait, eggs. say that again. I said scrambled if my mom makes them, but I like her scrambled eggs more than I like most people's. So her Ooh, eggs hey. are scrambled. We don't want to get into your love life. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah. Max, what do you normally do to end the night? Um. <laughs> I uh, I usually end my nights with either a open mic or a nice basketball game. Who's watching? Mike? A nice basketball game yeah. watching. Oh. <laughs> watching. I didn't want to make it seem like I play under the lights basketball. to like end my evenings. On, like. Also known as homoing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> watching basketball. <laughs> Max, Story. what's the weirdest thing that you've ever uh, masturbated to? The weirdest thing I've ever masturbated to? Yeah. Remember the Titans? I don't know, probably like a, like a friend's mom directly, but like a memory of her. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, probably Kids it wouldn't smaller. be porn. Yeah, her be. name's Vicky Reagan. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get the reference. I was outside on the porch. Max, did yeah. you jack off to my mom? Uh, Max Hooper, look, that, at me in the, look at me in my cold, dead eyes. Did you jack off Vicky? to my mom? Ma Max Hooper, I'll ask the questions. Did you jack off to my mom? Look at me in my cold, dead eyes when I spanketh unto your face. <laughs> No. Are you guys friends? We know what? each other, yeah. Are you guys friends? What? Now do you want to look at <laughs> Michael Denai's cell volcano? I want to know, are you courageous Dude, I feel like this is school, school man. Mom. What? You, I didn't name it. He said it. What? No, Jeremiah what? said it. What? Vicky what? Ray. What? Right, oh, oh that was the real mom. I didn't know that. You named the real mom? That oh, that oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It was no, my real you mother. It, you said it wasn't him, though. The mother of dragons, we used to call her back in the beach. Welcome to the halftime show, everybody. Yeah, something, something just happened. Um, so, Max, <laughs> motherfucking Hoover, did you have fun here tonight? I did. Thank you so much. I had a blast. You're welcome, Max Hoover. There he goes, Max Hoover. He's on Twitter at not Max Hoover. That's Max Hoover's time. Ooh, look at that! Look what you got locked and loaded. That crazy fucking shit. How do people listen to this every week? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I like that you say that right after you just plunged a minute of dead air right into everything, Pat. Really, really good timing. Yeah, dude, I'm, tor I'm tortured under lights like a lab rat in a, like a school. You're like a teacher and it's just like, I don't know, man. Oh, it's and just you're it's such just... an outside-of-the-box <laughs> artist that living in such foundations must be so hard for you with all I of just, your extreme creativity. I just, I just I just like doing my shit more. I know, yeah, we all do. We all do different shit, and every Monday we do this, Pat. Congratulations. Yep, I'm one of the top young rising comedians in the world. You have a new show called Void on Snapchat, so let's just keep plowing through and staying positive, fucko. Yeah. Guys, I pulled another man. name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Steve Heiss, everyone. <laughs> Steve Heiss on this very real episode of Kill Tony. It's a very live episode, isn't it? No Steve Heiss? All right, let's keep plowing through it. God. Steve Rice? Also known as homeworking through it. How do people listen to this every week? His last name was Rice? Put your hands together for Clint Watson, everyone. Clint Watson. You know what? We'll go back to the bucket in just a moment. Let's do something special. It's been a couple weeks. She's been in New York City. She's back. The Frankenstein of Kiltoni, the great, the powerful, the one, the only, Ali Makovsky, ladies and gentlemen, with a brand new minute. 
She's back. I've been off for her four times. Four times. Hi, uh, I'm happy to be back from New York. I I love going to New York. I think the reason I love New York so much is because I grew up watching Law and Order SVU. So like as soon as I got off the plane, I was so starstruck. You know, I was like walking around the city and I was like, someone was raped here. <laughs> Season three, episode 15. Also, every other episode. It's a weird pattern. When I was little, I thought that Special Victims Unit was like, we're victims, but we're special. <laughs> Turns out, not so special. My mom used to call me special growing up, and I was like, use a different word. I, uh, my new safe word is in a criminal justice system. Like, <laughs> oh, these acts are especially heinous. Okie dokie. Exactly a minute. Ali Makovsky is back. The one and only regular. Writes and performs a brand new minute every single week. You've had a couple weeks off. You were in New York City. How was. was that? It was great. They love the Law & Order material out there. They do? <laughs> think it was like a close to home thing, maybe. Oh. Whatever. All right. Did you get any uh, dick wolf while you were out there? Oh, baby. Where's that wolf? Any Law & Order STD? Is <laughs> that a chef? Uh, no STD. I actually just got tested, and mom is clean as a damn whistle. Oh, really? <laughs> damn, whose whistle are we talking about it's here? It's the rape whistle. Oh, as <laughs> clean as a... That's funny. Thank you. I do comedy. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, what else happened in New York? Anything else interesting? Um, nothing too interesting. I mean, uh, no. I was really hoping someone would kill themselves on the train, but. Allie, did, did anyone touch your lower east side? <laughs> uh, no. No. You had fun though, did spots, fall in love or anything like that? Uh, I might have fallen in love, but I fall in love everywhere I look, you know? Okay. I mean, I, uh, yeah, I did a lot of spots, that was great, performing, um, and yeah, it was a good time. Did you notice a difference between like the, the comics from on the East Coast compared to the West, West Coast? Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, what was the main differences? Would you uh, I would say that New York comics take comedy seriously and not themselves and LA comics take themselves seriously and not the comedy. Wow, that's really interesting. That's about right. Hey, uh, could you also tell could us the difference between white people and black people? Yeah, yeah, so black people be like... <laughs> Sal, I'm interested to hear what you think about her analysis of the I, I, I want to know, did you did you phrase that yourself? Have you heard I did. No, I, it came to me, and I keep telling everyone because I think I'm really smart now. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily make a blanket generalization. Uh, yeah, I, it's very general. Yeah. But 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 it, it is an astute observation, which which I uh, I was just your perception, whether it's true or not. I I enjoyed you you paring it down to that. Yeah, I mean, I was just people. You know, whenever I go there, people ask like. I mean, it's just one of those questions like, what's the weather like in L.A.? What's the L.A. comedy like? And that was just the one thing that I kind of took away from it, at least in my experience, like in my circle of friends. Tony, we were just talking about this the other day when we went and did Kill Tony there, how the quality of comedian out there is just top, top shelf. I mean, we didn't even, it was hard to even say anything to them except move the fuck out of New York because yeah. that's how good they were out yeah, but there. But the really good ones work both places, so there's really yeah. no differentiation. You know, it's like it, they, they come out here for TV, but they go back there to, to practice stand-up because the yeah. competition is so good. Yeah. Did you ever have a... <laughs> <laughs> At McDonald's for breakfast. Ali Makovsky is back on Kill Tony. We'll see you next week with another brand new minute. There she goes, Allie Mikoski. All right. Back to the bucket we go, shall we? Let's get a fucking stranger up here. Let's get a stranger or maybe someone cool. The legendary Aphrodite is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, sitting right here. Kill Tony. Superwoman. All right, I pulled another name out of the bucket. Put your hands together for Tema Louise Saul.
my name's Tema. It's a ukulele. Her name's Yukiono, okay? I'm, I'm black from the waist down, Jewish from the nose up. I just want to throw that out there. Okay. This is a little song about getting back into the dating game. It's called Get to Know My Brain. I know you can't help yourself from looking down at my beautiful butt. It's so bodacious and round. But I've seen you looking left and right because I've seen your face on Tinder, Bumble, and J Swipe. What I proposed to you before we jump right into the sack Is that you take me out for coffee and maybe a snack Oh, I'm not on Tinder just to score some D Because I want more out of life than an STD Get to know my brain and baby you will see That I'm a nice Jewish girl native to Southern Cali I'm well educated, a foodie and funny And I promise, oh, and I promise, nope and I promise to get better at the ukulele. Thank you, guys. Emma Louise Salt. <laughs> I get it. I get it. She, she's like, she's, I'm ready. What, she's what I like to call a fullback. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say a tight end, but. Uh, that's the name yeah. of my fantasy I don't know. football team. That, that's, that. that's a four bedroom. <laughs> A lot of square footage happening over here. Yeah, I know. Definitely. I know. Thank is that, you. Is that all natural? How does that 100% happen? 100% kosher. What do yes. you think that came from? Uh, genetics. Wow. Genetics? Your yeah. mom has that? By L. Ron Hubbard? I got it from my mama. I'm sorry. <laughs> genetics? <laughs> so your mom has a big butt, too? She does. And a big personality. Oh, I bet. What's she doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't she like to know? <laughs> Tell us. Tema, how long? Awesome. How long you been doing stand up? I started March two thousand nine. Um, I've probably been working about four of the years out of those eight years. What do you mean working? Like really working hard for it. <laughs> oh right. So you got the ukulele four years ago. A year ago. A year ago. <laughs> she got the package. She was like, "Is it worth it? Let me work it." I put my game down, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> How long, uh, how long have you been with the ukulele? I bought it a year ago. A year ago. Yeah, right. and I just decided to start writing music. It, it just all kind of came naturally, so. It did? It did. Just like this. <laughs> it, so your whole act is not with the uke, or your whole act right now is with the uke? Right now, it's, well, it, it goes back and forth. I do stand-up and I do ukulele, so I like to do both. So. Have, have you ever been to the playoffs? I have. I ha yeah, in fantasy football or, or, yeah, yes, I have. Tema, uh, yes. what do you do for a living? I'm a stand-in. A stand-in? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's called stand up. D dumb. Right, right, right. No, um, I should clarify. Dom, was... why did you laugh so hard when she said stand-in? <laughs> well, it's just, you know, it's kind of sad, but. <laughs> no, I mean, like, you're not the real person. You're, like, standing there until the real person. I'm second you know, team versus first second team. team yeah. ass, you're not the real person. Yeah. No, but I mean, I don't mean Working to my way towards first team. Here's what I don't understand. Four years ago, you were sitting there thinking, I got to write more jokes or get a ukulele. <laughs> I, I can't make up my mind. Should I get a mandolin? Nah. That'd be crazy. A bass fiddle? Fuck it. That's not funny. Ukulele? That's funny. And then you just ran with it, and, and here I you did. are. Yeah. Well, I just I, I had a lot I've of nights been a of big just. Fan, by the way, I love your stuff. You're Thank always you. Oh. Shit, you fucking believe me? <laughs> he was making a joke there. I am very gullible, oh, so I did, I but sorry. that's I, okay. Did great. Flag okay. on the field. <laughs> Flag on the field. You have an endearing quality to you immediately. Thank immediately you. like you. You're warm. You're smiling. I think you, you immediately draw people in. So I think that that is a, a strong quality of what you have. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I I uh, I don't know. When you started off with like a, a cat skills type of joke, though, mm. you're like, I'm black from the waist down, Jewish from the nose up. It's kind of kind of uh, hacky. You know okay. what I mean? Like I would, I would, I would. I mean, you could say more about that distinguishment in, in a better way than to Got come it. out and just do like this old school type of like, you know. Right. If you're yeah. gonna be hacky from the beginning, then you might as well just start playing that ukulele the second you get the fuck right. out there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Just yeah. 
If you could be self-aware of your hack, that might be something where you're like winking to the audience, but uh, you know you want to try and stay away from full hack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of the '80s. <laughs> Baby yeah. got hack. Yeah. I, every time you play the. Once you oh, you almost got I her to say Brian just, at the. Uh, you're triggering me. You're starting I power. Really Wow. Back that. Wow. Hey, hey, Tony. Tony, it, it's it's true what they say. Yeah? What, what, once you go hack, you never go back. <laughs> back that hack up. Yeah, she really... She really brought her butt very close to uh, very close to the sword. Yeah, we, I, got a, I got a whiff of it. I can't afford it, but I want to buy your ass a boat. <laughs> can you? Can let me ask you a question about your butt. Can it too play the ukulele? Um, I can train it. It's possible. I think anything's possible. So, have you noticed that a lot of people from a specific race tend to hit on you? Yeah. In what race would that be, Tama Louise? You mean, you mean the nun? She said it, not me. The kind that wears their socks when they fuck. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. In number 76. Jews? Lepers? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Tama. You, uh, hey, how, all, right, all, right, all right, I'm trying I try to focus. Okay, do you feel that the ukulele has helped you bring out something inside that's more like innate comedically to you or are you using it as a crutch? Because if you're using it as a crutch, then I would say to abandon it and just don't be afraid of doing straight comedy. I, I feel that and thank you. Um, I, I think it's an extra skill that I have that I found and I, I love it because I feel it's unique and it's different, um, but I also enjoy being able to just do stand up as well. Like. It's hard. I have a love for I'm so attracted to you. Aww. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we found a new band member, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Emma Louise on the ukulele. That, that's my hey. team player, Yoko. Patty Reagan, right there. <laughs> Yoko Ono. Yuki Ono. Yuki Ono. Okay. Are you going to. Hey, hey how fast does your butt run a 40? <laughs> Emma, what do you think about Pat telling you that uh, he's attracted to you? Are you single right now? I am. Oh. I am. What kind of, what kind of guys are you into? Uh, funny, smart. Oh, uh, Hawaiian. Um, Pat, what, Pat, good what family, would you do to her? Good background. What would you do to her if you had like a little chance? You know. Well, oh, I think I think I don't know. You know, this is this is like a public forum. We're in front, like you know. So I, I don't, I don't feel. I think I don't feel really comfortable. Uh, I'll tear that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb motherfucker. <laughs> he usually has a muffin for breakfast. All right, Tamil Louise Saul. Thank there she you. goes. That's an email you put on your Twitter handle there. All right, go to the bucket one more time. What do you guys say, huh? You guys still have energy out there? Uh, oh, oh, this is interesting. Just one word, and it says it's first a, time it's a next turtle. to the name. Uh, perhaps this could be one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It says first time and one other word, and that word is Raphael. <laughs> Whoa. And if that's him, start walking faster, yes. Raphael. Raphael making an entrance like The Undertaker. Oh, he just left. All right. I guess Raphael's gone. Wow. I've never seen a human walk exactly like Michael Myers before. <laughs> that was fucked up. That was creepy. All right. I pulled another name. This is Arthur Hamilton. I don't understand how people sign up and then leave. I never really understood that. 
Do people write their names and then just run away? I think sometimes they get scared or they get shy or they think it's not a good spot for them or something like that. I don't know. Justin Glockler. Oh, I was fucking a fat bitch in the back. My bad, y'all. My bad. Team Thick over here, right? Justin team Thick. Glockler. Anybody Team Thick in here? Don't be afraid. Wait a second, Justin. Oh, here we go. Right. Okay. Okay. Anyway, are you Arthur? Yeah, I am. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Arthur Hamilton, everybody. Yeah. You wait. Yeah. All right, let's uh, do this again. Sorry about that. Black people are always late and shit, right? <laughs> That's the shit we do. Y'all would have think with a name like, like Arthur Hamilton, I'll be on time and shit, right? Yeah, I guess so. I got a white ass name. My friend said I sound like a slave owner and shit. <laughs> That's a black dude laughing hard to that shit too. I would have been good to my slaves though, man. I would have rolled blunts with them and shit, you know what I'm saying? If I had sex with their women, I would have let them hit too, you know what I mean? Your turn, dog. Go ahead, bye. Right ahead, fam. Right the fuck ahead. Whew, I'm high as shit, y'all. Got my weed card, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got my shit for a valid reason, y'all. Neck pain, okay? Because I used to always roll the weed like this and shit. So over time, my nigga neck start hurting and shit, you know what I mean? It was valid, though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, stopped, I almost stopped smoking weed the other day because I took a dab, y'all. I was so high, I went to the bathroom. I had to sit down to pee, y'all. You could finish it if you want. Yeah, I was so high, man. I fucking sat down to pee, y'all. I tucked my dick in, y'all, because you don't, you don't want your dick to touch the toilet and shit. You know what I mean? Tuck it in and hold it. <laughs> I sat there for 15 minutes, y'all. I was so high, I thought I took a shit. I wiped my ass, and I was like, uh, where the fuck is the doo-doo at? Thanks, Tony. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Check, check, where check. Where the fuck is that check, doo-doo check. At? Where is the doo-doo, babe? Where that doo-doo be? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about ukulele? Where did doo-doo be? How you doing, Arthur? I'm doing good, Is man. Your first time on the show? No, my second time. Okay, what did we learn about you last time? Uh, I'm from Pacoima. Brody Stevens knew my fucking high school mascot and shit. <laughs> yeah. He knew all the mascots. Remember that? Had yeah, the red that's shoes a on. Specialty. Yeah. Uh, so what do you do for work? I work at an RV dealership, Marv. Oh, yeah. Okay, now I remember. Yeah, you remember. Yeah, Fuck not, yeah. not what, too many black in dudes. What's pocket right here? Oh, my weed, y'all, <laughs> right here. You know what I'm saying? My no dick. sativa. <laughs> no sativa. My right. nigga Darren. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't staring you smell it? straight into an erection. It's yeah. called, uh, no, 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 no. It, you know, definitely bigger than that, dog. I'm, I'm a stereotype, real shit. S sativa, oh. sativa or indica? Indica. Uh, indica all day. The world's crazy, so. You gotta calm down. You gotta be calm in this yeah, world. He doesn't need any more energy, right? No, no, no. Interesting, interesting. So, how long have you been on stand-up, Arthur? Three years. Three years, and you always you always this hyped up? No, man. I was upstairs at the other show. Yeah. Help help him run sound. Shit had to run down here. Somebody told you they pulled Arthur Hamilton. They did. And I almost pushed the old white dude over. By the way, in the <laughs> you did. You almost tackled Justin Glockler, who got pulled after you. In oh, okay. In the yeah, yeah, Justin Glockler. Yeah. The it's all on his face. It's all good, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in the future, if we call somebody else, then you already lost your thing. Uh, you know, I didn't hear him, dog. But I know the rules. I know. It's okay. A, okay. Yeah, it's good. That, you, that, that almost you ran past happens. the other guy. <laughs> hey, hey, he didn't want it. He didn't want it, did he? He, if he saw me coming, he should have been like, hell no, let me get up here. He just had the better route. Yeah, man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Real shit. So, Arthur, you've been selling RVs for how long now? You know what I'm saying? I don't sell them. I'm just a service writer and shit, so I'm like, I do the bullshit. Like, what kind of bullshit? Hand jobs. Oh, that's serious? Yeah. He sells RVs. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I, I didn't. I'm a I'm a service writer, so I you know whatever you, whatever the problem is, I write it up, and you hope that the shit gets fixed, cause uh, nobody gives a fuck in the RV industry, real shit. Really? If you own an RV or a trailer, you know that shit takes forever to get parts and all that shit. They don't. No, they don't give a fuck about y'all. They don't. That's why black people don't really have them, cause uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a fuck about us in the first place. So if we buy an RV, they still ain't gonna give a fuck about us. Man. Yeah. 
That's interesting. I would have thought. Dude, how about Mexican people? A lot of Mexican people in the RV game? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, they rented drugs from here to Mexico and shit. We we had a dude, and he had, like, two Corvettes and shit. We was like, yo, this nigga's running drugs. Yeah. Be nice to him. How do you know he had two Corvettes? He drove both of them to no, the he, RV dealership? No, he, he pulled up in them. He was like, yo, I need to get some shit out the RV. And we were like, do whatever you got to do. Wow. You don't, you don't fuck with them, though. Uh -huh. You don't fuck with them. Does RV stand for really vague? <laughs> if you want it to. If you want it to. Arthur, uh, what's your love life like right now? You know what I'm saying? It's lit right now. It is? A lot of black girls? Black? Why, you know, honestly, though... Uh, Sativa or Indica? <laughs> I'm just naming black girls I know. Yo! Sativa to the honestly, stage. Which one's black girls, you said? Which one? Uh, I, was just, I was just kidding. I feel like I get a lot of Sativa girls, man. Bitches be crazy, man. Like, I gotta, you know... Give us an example of a bitch that be crazy. A later. bitch that be crazy? Okay, a bitch that be crazy. Okay, she sucked my dick on Van Nuys. And Ventura. Van Nuys and Ventura. The yeah, laser tag. Crazy. The laser tag, please. No, no, no. Right next to uh. No, nah, man. What no kind kids. of elevators there? This is this is grown man fucking shit. Okay. Oh, so, grown man fucking shit. Yeah, you just another homoing. You just get no, 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 no. Van Nuys and Ventura, like Van Nuys and Ventura Boulevard. Yeah, like on the public street, man. I told her people was walking by. She didn't care. She just went. What time in the she day? Went harder. It was like 12 o'clock, man. The freaks in come the, out at night. In the afternoon? 12 no, at night. Oh, okay. 12 o'clock. I, I can't get head in the daytime, up. man. <laughs> <laughs> that Jordan's above the bullshit. No, nah, man, real shit. Get the fuck out of here. No, nah, man, I'm telling you, dog. Really? I'm telling you. She just she took the whole thing, man. So what are you even le Were you leaning against something? I was in the car, man, chilling. Oh, you're in a car. You're I was in the car. The she was speaking seat? into the mic. Yes. No, passenger seat. You're in the passenger seat. She drove. She's in the driver's seat. I couldn't seat. drive after that, man. You couldn't drive after what? The head was so good, I wasn't able to drive after that. I shouldn't have drove after that. Wow. Yeah. You know so you were sitting shotgun, getting a blowjob. Yep. What kind of car is this? It's like a, uh, a Honda Civic, Ooh. like an 06. God damn. Black yeah, with a, dent, with a dent on the side. When you see a girl with a dent on the side, she got some good head. You know what I'm saying? Really? Is that true? Right. That's dent real on shit. The side, crack Am I phone. lying? I'm not lying. By the way, uh, Ventura and Van Nuys is a pita kitchen. There there's a, what's that, there's what's a, that, there's a, what's that restaurant on the corner? U.S. Bank, Crave Cafe. Crave Cafe, yeah. We just <laughs> left Crave Cafe. You I had the, barbe had the barbecue chicken pizza. Fire. You had the barbecue chicken pizza. Real shit. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, you do. You had the barbecue chicken pizza that if you night? don't, If you don't take my advice, you're dumb as fuck. Get the barbecue chicken pizza there. Was it really barbecue chicken pizza, or did you just make it barbecue chicken pizza? You ordered wings. If I did make a barbecue pizza, they were hire a nigga and shit, okay? Because <laughs> I don't fuck around with my barbecue, okay? So you're getting a blowjob in mm -hmm. a Honda Civic. Yep. Baby got hatchback, if you will. And how long, like, how long of a blowjob does, does, how long does that last? That seems uncomfortable for a girl to, to go No, over she didn't care. Is she on her knees on the, the driver's seat, or is she sort of like No, nah, she's like 6'2", so she wasn't on her knees, six okay? Two. She was driving. No. She still has her seatbelt on. My homeboys, my homeboys have seen me with it, yeah. I had me an Amazon bitch, for real shit. She plays Ooh, Amazon her. Prime? No, no, no. Uh, Amazon Hood, no. dog, okay? Amazon Hood. Uh, Amazon. I yeah, think the correct up. term is transvestite. Uh, <laughs> Getting some of that Eddie Murphy head. Hell no! <laughs> Hell no! You ain't gonna do me like that. Allegedly. Uh, you ain't gonna do me like that. Allegedly. So. Yeah. Oh, you have a very funny way about you. Yeah. Like it's, it's it's you know you you literally said bitches be crazy. They do. It's like I know I know they do. Mm. But like. It, 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 that is a very like stereotypical like a hack type of, uh, but it doesn't matter because you have you. It's still funny. Mm -hmm. So you said bitches be crazy. I'm like I've heard that. Like I, that's what I would do if someone was like make a stereotypical like oh uh, you know black silly hack joke. Mm -hmm. I'm like bitches be crazy, and that would be hack. But when you said it, it was still funny, and that is actually like, really telling to me because that mm -hmm. means that you could just. It doesn't matter. You're transcending that. Yes. You're just so funny in, in your just the way about you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very funny. Uh, when you went on with the joke at the meow, though, and you started talking about duty, it reminded me of, like, remember the beginning of Raw when it, they showed Eddie Murphy as a kid? And it was What's-His-Name from, uh, 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 from, like, Paul Mooney. No, no. Mm -hmm. John it was What's-His-Name from? From, uh, from, from Different Strokes. Gary Coleman. Yeah, the, but his friend. 
Uh, this is bad. I'm going up. Dudley? Right. I, yeah, Dudley. Dudley is in the beginning of Roy. He plays the Andy Murphy. And he's like doing comedy for his family. He's like, and duty got stuck. Mm -hmm. and, and, and duty, duty. And that, then it took like a turn for me. I thought that you could be funnier than that. When you were like, I was waiting for the duty or whatever. Like, yeah, I was, like, was waiting ah, for the duty. Yeah, I, I feel you. Yeah, it's okay, man. It's all yeah. right. But I appreciate it, though, man. I used to say BBT. And BBT stands for bitches be tripping. <laughs> did you make that up yourself? I did, man. Wow. Copyrighted, dude. What does BET stand for? You know what BET stands for. You need to fuck with a black chick, man. Have you ever had black pussy? Oh, yeah. It's not. No, you have. You see about a hair scratch, he's like, oh, You never. mean for free? <laughs> I've never, I've never had the brown sugar. <laughs> Shit, Dom. <laughs> I've been with a black woman before, right, Aphrodite? Dom's over back. Oh, shit. Don't lie. I seen her booty. Your dick ain't reaching that far, dog. You ain't. No. You son of a bitch. You, How you dare need, you? This is what you need, dog. Okay? Real shit. I'm going to keep it real with you, Tony. You have a four-foot penis. Stop. You got to. Truly outrageous. That is unfathomable. A four foot penis. It's two feet away from being fathomable. <laughs> and here tonight, that's a, that's a triple callback right there. Got it. Still got it. Arthur Hamilton, you have the name of the whitest white guy I've ever heard in my entire life. How'd you get a name like Arthur Hamilton? <sighs> Shit, I really don't fucking know, man. Sounds like you're named I after do. like a British TV show about a mouse or something like that. <laughs> Another episode of Arthur Hamilton coming up next on. <laughs> I'll take it, man. Fuck it. As long as you give me my check, dog. Let's go. I'm cool with that. You have brothers and sisters? I got nothing but sisters, man. Nothing but sisters. Hey, Tony. Wait, you mean like family or just friends? <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins. <laughs> do, do, doesn't it look like Arthur and I should switch names? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. That for I should be Jeremiah. Yeah. That is hilarious. That is so funny! You look like Shh. Jeremiah Watkins and he looks like Arthur Hamilton. That is unbelievable. Wow. Uh, hi guys. Uh, Arthur Hamilton here. Great to be here. <laughs> Yo, they call me J-Dub. What's good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> J Dubs and old Artie Hamilton. <laughs> yeah, old Artie Hamilton. <laughs> Believe it or not, Jeremiah, the actual Jeremiah, is part of the All Negro Wave. Did you know that? On yeah, Battle, yeah, 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 yeah. The Roast Battle. He's the only. I do know that. I'm woke. All right, Arthur. So, like, uh, you know, for example, like, you know, what when you're selling RVs or you know what, fuck the RVs. Yeah, fuck them RVs. I hate my fucking job, y'all. Fuck that. What's your least favorite part about your job? When white people call in and they don't know me and they're like, oh, yeah, what's up, brother? Ooh. I'm like, yo, how you know I'm black, man? What the fuck, man? I got my professional voice sometimes, on. Sometimes, sometimes. Maybe because you answer the phone like, bitches be yeah, tripping. What's up, motherfucker? You goddamn right, they do. Where's the RV at? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Arthur. Got to, man. You got to be a savage sometimes. Fuck I these, love it, man. Fuck these customers, man. Real shit. I'll tell you this, man. You answer the questions honestly. You were a great fucking guest on a show where it was Have me a, back. So Have me back, a dog. Of, a lot of a lot of people giving a lot of short answers tonight, but you were a lot of fun to interview. There he is, I Arthur know Hamilton, bitch. everybody. He's on Twitter at Comedian Arthur. There he goes. Arthur Hamilton. Sort of reminds me of Preacher Lawson, who's gotten pulled out of the bucket quite a few times and came in fifth place this week on America's Got Talent. Preacher motherfucking Good Lawson. Shot, preacher. Wow, Ryan J.E. Belt's drawing is fucking crazy. Four football players lugging our heads around. Yeah. We did it, guys. Yeah. Let's kill Tony live at the Comedy Store. Again, just a reminder, you got to watch Snapchat's new show, Void. Five episodes this week. Pat Reagan, Joel Jimenez, Brian Moses, and John Tomaszewski. Check it out on Snapchat, Comedy Central. Sal Volcano, I'm doing the Impractical Jokers cruise with you yeah. November 1st through the 5th. I believe that's sold out, right? That is sold out, yes. What else do you want to promote or plug? What else is going on? Uh, November 9th, Madison Square Garden. How wow. Whoa! <laughs> Go see it. Also, Look it's fucking there. fun. Those guys are absolutely great. The Tenderloins, the Impractical Jokers, the fucking best. Dom, you performed at the Greek Theater with them last night. It was night. great. The, the, the fucking show was terrific. Other Dom Irera? What do you got coming up? Well, I don't want to brag. I'm at the Mr. McGooby's Friday and Saturday. 
No, but it's a great club. Why do they have to fucking name it that? Is it yeah. really? Wait, I think Mr. Mr. McGooby's. No, I'm serious. I, yeah. What city is right. that? It's in uh, 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 Towson, yeah, Maryland, right at, at oh, okay. Baltimore. But I was on stage. I was talking about this at the uh, Sydney Opera House one yeah. week, and the next week I was at Mr. McGooby's. <laughs> Talk about keeping you fucking humble. <laughs> anyway, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad that I'm still filling the room, everybody, and come back when I'm not here to see Tony's show. <laughs> Also, I just really quick thank you guys for always having me when I'm here. This is literally my favorite show to do, and I'm not. We love yeah. to have you guys. Yeah. You, we style. use you and Dom every chance we fucking get, and that'll never end. We love talking to comedians with you guys. Both both of you are very uh, lovable and uh, harsh, and that's a perfect guest for the show. Honest. Well, I hope they know we're kidding and trying to have fun with them because. It, it, even, even even a minute's hard when you've never done it. Absolutely. Yeah, so. Or if you've done it nine years, a minute can be hard. Oh, yeah. um, Jeremiah Watkins, what's up, buddy? Hey, follow me on social media, at Jeremiah Stand Up. Uh, and then also, Pat and I have a new sketch out at ReaganandWatkins.com, so definitely check that out right now. Also, check out the video of uh, last night of Jeremiah Watkins dancing uh, and singing Adele to Gary Busey. Uh, he... <laughs> It is one of the funniest things you'll ever see. <laughs> Cap City for me, Rooster Teeth Feathers, La Jolla Comedy Store, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Adelaide, starting in Melbourne, November 22nd. I'm spending Thanksgiving in Australia this year. Chris, what's up, buddy? Uh, if you like monsters, <laughs> you like you comedy. Love the Monster Energy Outbreak. Tour. Yeah, yeah, yep, that's all right. You like so. monsters, you like comedy, you like music. Uh, check out Drack and the Swamp Rats. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel Berg is in the motherfucking house. Joel? Guys, please, watch Void, Comedy Central Snapchat. Yep. Please, do it. We love and you guys. Follow Drive him it. on all social media, mostly. Sorry, you know the dates. Come see Kill Tony Live sometime. Make sure you check out this episode in VR 360, available on Facebook. Tony, Facebook. Tony, Tony. Yeah. Tony. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tony. Oh, I just wanted to say sometimes I pinch myself uh, and can't believe I'm here. I love the show so much. <laughs> and then also, uh, <laughs> also listen to Bill Withers. Yeah, look, check out Bill Withers. I absolutely love Bill Withers. I'll be in uh, Indianapolis November 8th with Qu Kate Quigley, November 9th, Columbus Funny Bone. There you go. Check it all out. See Kill Tony live. Check everything out. Go have more fun. Live audience, thank you very much for coming out. We'll see you on the patio after the show. Do you want a high five or something like that? Thanks, Danny, Lucas, Ryan, J.E. Belt. Bye, everybody. Have a great night. Yeah.